Welcome to the studios of the Government Information Service National Television Network. I am Lisa Joseph, and we're here for the live ceremony to formalize the Technical Cooperation 2021 between the GIZ and the Senusha Marine Management Authority, the SMMA. And here with me for that live ceremony is the chairman for the SMMA, is Mr. Rike Alexander. We also have the project manager of the GIZ, that's Mr. Haman uh, Faulkner, as well as the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning Cooperatives, uh, we're talking Mr. Barrymore Fidesian. So what is the GIZ? The, it is the German Agency for International Development. It is also a service provider in the field of international cooperation for sustainable development and international work, employment promotion, energy and environment, among other areas that it promotes. Now, over the last eight years or so, the GIZ has been working in St. Lucia, extensive work at that. And this year, 2021, sort of new project or an extension of that work is uh, taking place here. It's the Sustainable Marine Financing Program, and that is being rolled out. And so that's why we are here today to formalize that technical cooperation agreement between the GIZ and the SMMA. I now invite the chairman of the SMMA, Mr. Ricky Alexander, to encapsulate for us the input of the GIZ in maintaining, enhancing, and creating a sustainable environment for St. Lucia's marine life, as well as the relationship between the two agencies over the years. Ricky? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Dr. Faulkner, Project Manager of GIZ, Mr. Barry Morfellis here, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Ms. Kisha Nolly, Representative of the NCA, National Conservation Authority, Ms. Monique Cauldron, Fisheries Biologist in the Ministry, Department of Fisheries in the Ministry of Agriculture. It is with warm hearts and of joy that I welcome this momentous occasion to continue our important partnership between this SMMA and the GIZ. The German Agency for International Development, GIZ, funded mainly by the German Federation, Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ, is currently working in 120 countries in worldwide. GIZ has a, a presence in St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean since 2013 in the area of support of marine managed areas such as the SMMA. The Caribbean Aquaterrestrial Solution Program, Phase 1 and 2 of the GIZ, which lasted in, in 2020, um, is continuing with a clear focus to support marine management areas with infrastructure and management tools, as well as improving climate resilience through systematic resource management. Today, we at the Sufre Marine Management Association, Inc., SMMA, are happy to be part of the Sustainable Marine Finance Program, which started in 2021. This program initiatives seeks to support marine managed areas to establish sustainable financing mechanism through capacity building. At the SMMA, we wholeheartedly embrace the view that marine protected areas, MPAs, serve as a strategic tool for long-term conservation of the marine environment, which includes species, habitats, ecosystems, and their services, as well as to ensure a sustainable management of the use of marine resources. In most developing countries, such as ours, there is a need to strengthen funding for MPAs for efficient protection of species and habitats to improve operational challenges. In general, existing MPAs suffer from a significant lack of resources to finance current costs, including staff costs, but also cost of equipment, monitoring, research, training, and management boundary demarcation, effective law enforcement, and the provision of adequate park infrastructure. Hence, the collaboration with GIZ, which is most welcome, 
seeks to strengthen the managerial and operational aspects of the SMMA, along with the new SMMA website, which has been finalized under the Jeff SGP program, which was first, which the first draft we saw, and we had members participating on February 11th, June 11th, 2021. It is important to note that existing financial contributions are well below requirements and reveal a strong disparity in collection and user payments, all of which affect protected area performance. Establishing sustainable financing for MPAs is thus an essential exercise to help marine protected areas reach its effective management capacity. This is why the formalizing of this important partnership with GIZ is critical as one of the important mechanisms to enhance the sustainability of the SMMA. While the financial resources of MPAs today depend on rather conventional mechanisms, public funds, European projects, bilateral aid and international donors, there are other important innovative mechanisms such as tourism spillovers that could contribute to sustainably to, to, to the sustainability of financial stability of MPAs. As MPA managers, we at the SMMA will continue to define funding strategies to strengthen and sustain our conservation activities over time. In this regard, special mention must be made of those cooperative agencies and business, businesses such as Sugar Bit Resort, Sandals, Tikai, Hotel, and Shastney and Jade Mountain, who are punctually faithful in remitting payments for user fees to the SMMA. Naturally, this is vital for ensuring the viability, particularly at this critical juncture of the financially strained COVID new normal environment. The SMMA is engaging in dialogue with all its patrons to maintain cordial relations in the sustainable management of the marine protected space. It is well known worldwide that tourism is the largest industry, with ecotourism being an important segment of that market. Annually, millions of tourists around the world visit protected areas or travel to destinations of nature-based recreation, such as the SMMA. While MPAs often supply the most important part of such recreational experiences, like snorkeling, diving, glass bottom tours, etc., we need to ensure that MPAs in particular benefit from capturing a significant amount of the total economic benefits derived from ecotourism. As a region made up of thousands of islands and caves surrounded by nearly a million square miles of ocean, the Caribbean is especially dependent on coral reefs. The fishing and tourism industries, the diving forces behind econ economies across the region cannot survive without flourishing reefs. A study led by the Nature Conservancy revealed that reef-associated tourism generates 7.9 billion for Caribbean economies annually. In addition, reefs help protect vulnerable communities against the devastating impacts of climate change, including coastal erosion, flooding, and deadly hurricanes, as well as supporting fisheries. It is important to note that reef adjustment tourism generates an estimated 5.7 billion per year from roughly 7.4 million visitors. We are well placed to benefit tremendously from adjacent reef tourism within the SMMA and the Western Marine Protected Spaces. It is in this regard that a number of relatively simple, globally accepted market-based mechanisms known collectively as tourism user fees, TUFs, can gather significant revenues from tourism-based initiatives which can then be directed towards supporting MPAs like the SMME and other conservation efforts. The understanding, cooperation and adherence to such fee mechanisms by users who eke out their existence and sustenance for the use of the marine protected space is absolutely essential in ensuring non-confrontational cordial relationships, which is important for effective management of MPAs such as the SMMA. The fees particularly reflect the cost of supplying recreational services, the demand for natural resources, and the value that visitors place on the experience of the site. 
the direct link between maintaining natural areas and income from the user fees serves as a strong economic incentive for conservation, which is an indigenous conservation policy of protected areas in St. Lucia. The SMMA will continue to play its part and its important role in marine conservation to avoid intense exploitation of our oceans and seas, which has the tendency of degrading marine biodiversity and ecosystems at an alarming rate. While we have an aggressive focus and agenda to make Soufre and St. Lucia the Monaco of yachting through the sustainable use of marine space from Rodney Bay, Soufre to Rodney Bay, which will no doubt lead to job creation and sustainable livelihoods in the Soufre Riviera, I want to place on record the important support and collaboration for other international agencies like MPA Connect who have and continue to support and collaborate with the SMMA. The SMMA is indeed pleased to strengthen its collaboration with GIZ to ensure long-term sustainable use of the marine space and we look forward to a long, fruitful and mutually beneficial partnership with the GIZ. Thank you so much for that, the chairman of the SMMA, Ricky Alexander. And as the chairman spoke, and he made mention of Monaco and, of course, the Riviera, I immediately thought about how that sort of hub and activity coming to St. Lucia. So thank you so much for likening us to those very popular areas in the world and, of course, where they've seen tremendous success when it comes to the marine management, when it comes to being able to do the uh, marine tourism and so forth. And the numbers that you indicated there really as well caught the attention that there is that economy taking place, that blue economy there, uh, with the reef associated tourism generating some $7.9 billion for the Caribbean economies annually. And sometimes we don't give thought to that when we think about tourism. We only think of the land-based tourism, but there is certainly more that we can do to be able to take advantage of what is happening uh, within the blue economy. And so for us to be able to get more on how the GIZ has been assisting St. Lucia in being able to position itself uh, to take advantage of the blue economy as well as preserving our marine life and being able to really uh, have communities as well get involved in the, the protection of our marine life as well as being able to enjoy it in the right way because there's a right way to enjoy um, the, what, is, what is our natural resources. And so we now invite the uh, project manager uh, for the GIZ in St. Lucia, that's Mr. Haman Fokker. So I do hope that I got the names correct because, you know, German can be a bit of a little difficult. As fascinating as it is, it can also be challenging for us non-German speakers. Ms. Armin, over to you. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. And actually, yes, uh, I think German is a quite difficult language, but... <laughs> yes, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Mr. Barrymore Felicien, PS in the Ministry of Agriculture. Thank you also, Mr. Ricky Alexander, General Manager and Chair of the SMMA. And thank you for the two visitors who accompany us today, Ms. Keisha Norley from the NCA and Ms. Monique Calderon from the Fisheries Department. I would now like to talk a little more about yeah, the project itself after Mr. Ricky has already explained a lot of the um, context, how marine life, the importance of marine life for St. Lucia. Yes, this program started in January this year and will last until December 2023. Probably there will be an extension for three more years, but this depends on the success of the project. Uh, it we're talking now about a regional project, so the focus uh, countries will not only be St. Lucia, but also Grenada, Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As in the Eastern Caribbean, almost all countries face the, certain, the same challenges regarding marine conservation. The project is implemented by 
GIZ, the German Development Agency, and CAFA. And as already mentioned, funded by the German Ministry of Economic Development and Cooperation. As was mentioned already, uh, GIZ has been supporting the uh, conservation of marine spaces since 2013 in the CUTS 1 and CUTS 2 projects. The first one was focusing on building the infrastructural capacities of the marine managed areas and the development of management tools. The second one then supported the marine managed areas in implementing the tools and first focused on improving climate resilience through system systemic uh, resource management. And now we are in the next phase on the next project that started, as I said, early this year. And the focus is on laying the foundations for the successful introduction of sustainable financing mechanisms, including capacity building. <coughs> Just a short look back uh, to the past to explain how GIZ has been supporting the SMMA through the CUTS 1 and 2 projects. So support was, uh, uh, among others, in equipment through dive gear, a compressor, computers and general office equipment, office renovation, a pickup truck, a boat, aerial and underwater drones. And there were certain trainings that were implemented for the staff of the SMMA regarding drone operation, computer skills, and QuickBooks, which is an accounting software. But we already heard, also heard uh, Mr. Ricky explaining that there are still more needs um, to be fulfilled uh, so the SMA can work and operate efficiently, protecting the marine life of its area. And now the question is, how can we together achieve to finance all these materials and infrastructure that is needed in the future. So this is why the GIZ now changed the focus a little bit and is focusing more on the financing aspect. And the project title of this new project is Establishing Sustainable Financing Systems for Marine Protected or Marine Managed Areas in Caribbean Small Island Developing States. The broad goals are the following. Introduction of sustainable financing mechanisms, maximize the SMMA capabilities to draw down funds from the CBF and other regional donors. Mr. Ricky explained uh, a lot about the revenues that are possible together from tourism. But besides that, and we have seen in the COVID-19 crisis that these are very volatile. So from one day to another, tourism almost went down to zero. So this might not be the only reliable, or should not be the only source of revenue for the marine protected areas. This is why we want to support the SMMA in accessing funds from the CBF, the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, or other donors that are active in this region and the sector, um, yeah, to diversify the sources of income. This we will do through human capacity building, uh, which is, means that the staff of the SMA will be trained so the staff will be able to write proposals and access these funds from CBF and others. So we also want to focus on drawing up national action plans uh, because having a national action plan to support marine protected areas or terrestrial protected areas helps us to increase the probability to get these proposals supported by the international organizations uh, as a national plan always gives more weight to the activity. We also want to focus on the exchange of experiences of all relevant partners at local, national and regional level. This means we want to build networks among the marine protected areas in the region to enable them or to uh, make possible that there's a peer-to-peer -peer exchange and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Because in the past, actually, the SMMA has supported other marine protected areas throughout the Caribbean region um, in their installation and, and their setting up 
their structures. And this is, I think, or we as GRZ think that this is an important um, strategy to support the sustainability of the marine protected areas in the region, to enable them to exchange their experiences and to learn from each other. And also in this context we want to support the introduction of regional voluntary guidelines and standard operation procedures for the marine protected areas and marine managed areas, just like to have a regional umbrella under which all these marine managed areas can operate. Um, now I would like to have a short look upon the trainings we envision uh, for this program period. These are based on a, a needs assessment that we conducted earlier this year to find out where are the actual needs um, for training at the SMA and the other marine protected areas we are partnering with. Uh, some of these trainings will be on the local level, just for staff of the SMMA. Some will be on a national level, including partners and the agencies or institutions that form the board of the SMMA, and some will even be on a regional level. So we might start just uh, passing through this fast, strengthening the board relation with the operations. This is something that will be implemented only for the SMMA because it will be very specific. So the Governance Board, National Conservation Trust Fund and MPA should be improved. Uh, effective communication and networking, contracts and agreements, identifying synergies of cooperation in St. Lucia. The second set of trainings will be probably on the national level. So one is proposal writing in order to obtain grants from international donors. There we would like to include other institutions that then might partner with the SMA to write these proposals and draw funds to St. Lucia in order to improve the management and operations at the SMA, but also obviously of the partners that are part of this joint uh, proposals. Yeah, accounting and financing for conservation finance. Understanding of complex financial arrangements and sustainable financing. And on a regional level we might have training such as project management, report writing, operations management, digital payment and financial management systems, digital and non-digital marketing, customer service and foreign languages. What are the benefits for the country and the local population if the SMMA improves its operations and its management? <clears throat> well, first we have healthy ecosystems. As pointed out before, St. Lucia depends to a large part on the marine space it is surrounded by. So healthy ecosystem, healthy marine space is very important for the country. We also talk about conservation of biodiversity, which is important as well for the country and worldwide, I have to say. The next point that is important is the resi resilience on climate change adaption, as especially small island states are challenged by the climate change, much more than larger countries. And last but not least, the improved livelihood opportunities for fisher folks and communities because supporting the operations of a marine managed area is not only for the sake of the marine managed area, but also we have to take to bear in mind the situation and the livelihood of the neighboring uh, communities. And uh, well, there was already enough or not enough, but there was already uh, an explanation about the importance of tourism for the economy. And I would just like to stress that a healthy marine managed area would obviously attract more tourists who will enjoy the beauty of the SMMA and the Sufla region, while a marine managed area that is in not so good conditions would attract less tourists. 
So that is like a self-supporting circle. If we have a healthy ecosystem in the SMMA, then more tourists will come to visit, more tourists then meaning more revenue to improve the services of the SMMA. Obviously, this is something we can not only do on our own, and not only Mr. Ricky and myself, also we need the support from the government of St. Lucia. Uh, specifically, regarding uh, on the political level, we're talking about uh, operational and community level, that we would like to have uh, support for the adoption of the regional guidelines and potentially for an adjustment of the fee scales, because I understand that those have not been changed for some years. We will conduct a willingness to pay survey to see if it makes sense and in which way the fees might be adjusted. And then we would also like to ask for support for the implementation of activities. That means technical support, um, infrastructure, etc. Just as we're having today, this meeting to promote um, the cooperation between SMMA and the GIZ. Yeah, finally, I would like to present the team, the project team, that is myself, uh, Volker Hamann, the project manager, then we have the senior admin and finance officer, Luenda George, uh, marine expert, Kamal David, rich to reef expert, Mandy St. Rose, and at the moment, one colleague based in Dominica, that is Brandon Defoe. Thank you very much. Merci, vielen Dank. Thank you so much, Mr. Faulkner, there for that comprehensive look at the GIZ, what it has been able to accomplish here in St. Lucia and under this new program where we can benefit and how that partnership can certainly be mutual. And now I want to invite the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning Cooperatives, Mr. Barry Felicien, who will, of course, give us a little bit more on that partnership uh, between the government of St. Lucia and the GIZ. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies, Ms. Lisa Joseph. Permit me to recognize Dr. Falker, GIZ Project Coordinator, Mr. Ricky Alexander, Chairman of the SMMA, representatives from the Department of Fisheries, and of course, from the National Conservation Authority. Distinguished viewers, good day. On this occasion, let me welcome Dr. Falker officially and formally on behalf of the Honorable Minister Ezekiel Joseph, the Government of St. Lucia, to St. Lucia. Welcome to St. Lucia, sir. We want to wish you and extend a very productive and mutual beneficial stay and wish you all the best in your tenure. You have come along from a long line of distinguished and esteemed predecessors in the like of Thomas Schuslick, Os Vogel, who have done tremendous work in St. Lucia in the Sustainable Development Agenda. So, once again, we want to wish you a very, very productive stay. Early on, Dr. Falker indicated that he needed government support, and indeed, he does have that support from the government of St. Lucia and the Department of Fisheries. We strongly endorse the technical cooperation agreement between GIZ and the SMMA. So that support is there, and we will commit the technical resources to make that possible. What we want to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is to continue the support that we receive under the CATS and CATS2 project. And we heard about that initiative and it contributed to building infrastructure, the implementation and implementation of management tools. And this natural progression takes place today with sustainable financing. 
The International Union for Conservation of Nature defines protected area financial sustainability as the ability to secure sufficient, stable, and long-term financial resources and to allocate them in a timely manner and in an appropriate form to cover full costs of protected areas, emphasis on full costs of protected areas, and to ensure that they are managed effectively and efficiently with respect to conservation and other objectives. So that is financial sustainability, and that is where we want to take the SMME. At the international level, our work is guided by the overarching goal of SDG 14, life below water. A lot of emphasis is placed on SDG 2 in agriculture, which is zero hunger and eradication of poverty. But SDG 14 is equally important as developing the goal of life below water seeks to ensure sustainability between use of marine resources and their protection and conservation the balance be between sustainable income, livelihoods, and allowing the future benefit of the resources for the generations to come. That is important. However, at the national level, our work is also guided by the fisheries policy, which was completed in December 2019, and the policy spans from 2020 to 2030. And it includes priorities and strategies for the development of the sector, such priorities would include the upgrading and developing of critical infrastructure for fisheries, safety at sea, the increase in production, including the use of aquaculture, and of course, we all heard from the previous speaker about in, in improving the status of farmers and fishers and their livelihoods. So improving the status of farmers especially, and fishers especially, is important in the 10 year span development goal for the sector, making it more productive, making it more attractive, and of course, making it more safe. The work is also guided by the Fish Reserve, Act, which provides us with our enforcement capability. And together, they provide the framework for stakeholder engagement, as well as provide support for enforcement and monitoring of the marine resources. Although our jurisdiction extends to the entire exclusive economic zone, we put particular emphasis on the Sufre Marine Area, which presents a geographic location that needed focus management. Due to its peculiarities, the SMA, SMMA is challenged with managing interests of competing uses and users, and we heard of the uses, the uses diving, touring, swimming, recreational use, and the like. Activities that put a lot of pressure on a defined space and pressure on the near coast fisheries, and of course, pressure on the coral reefs. Users, we have the diver association, the hoteliers, the general public, and the like. And of course, we need to manage the users as there needs to be equitable use of the resource, if not the most influential and powerful users get to manipulate the resource. It is important. So the SMMA has a critical role to play in the development and continued use of that area. So it has to deal with, in addition to these, deal with issues of marine pollution, illegal fishing, and illicit activity. Therefore, enforcement and monitoring of the resource is critical to its longevity. The funding for those activities must be stable. And we all know of COVID-19 and what it brought. COVID-19 revealed that the sources of financing for the SMME is highly correlated to the tourism industry. And we saw a plummeting of revenues over the last year, and perhaps more than the last year, a year and six months. As these sources of revenue were derived from mooring fees, derived from diving and concessions based on boat occupancy. So these are the sources of revenue for the SMME. And once that sector is in any way compromised, then the SMME itself is compromised and it has been compromised for the last period. There is a need for more robust financing platform to ensure SMME performance and protection of the marine space. We therefore welcome this initiative. Um, 
it is timely now. It would have been perhaps even a little better if it had taken place before COVID-19. But now we have, we have it here. We are pleased to have that support and the intervention of GIZ providing the support for laying the foundation. And it's important for us to make the distinction. They are going to be laying the foundation for a sustainable financing mechanism. This, when successful, will provide the SMME with the financial stability required to properly execute its mandate and boost performance. So that is what the outcome we want to see in the near future. So therefore, on behalf of all stakeholders, I wish to thank the GIZ for their continued partnership, partnership and commit, we as a government, commit to making this project a resounding success and a victory for all. Thank you. Thank you, P.S., for that clear illustration there of the government's commitment, a demonstrated commitment, both at the legislative uh, um, level as well as on the governance level. So thank you very much for that. And we're coming into our closing moment of this uh, live ceremony to formalize the technical cooperation for 2021 between the GIZ and the SMMA. And so I welcome back to the podium the chairman, Mr. Ricky Alexander, as he takes us to the close. Thank you again, Madam Moderator. Um, on behalf of the SMMA, uh, the board and the staff and the people of SUFRA, as well, we want to take the opportunity to thank um, GIZ and for that continued collaboration and to strengthen that partnership as we move from strength to strength with the SMMA. And PS, on behalf of the government as well, thank you very much for the support and the guidance and the wisdom and we look forward to for us working together as a team for us to achieve the objectives and again as I said to strengthen that relationship and to manage the marine protected space in a sustainable way that is socially acceptable, economically feasible and environmentally sound. Thanks again, thank you very much and welcome again Mr. Faulkner. <laughs>